Hello guys, the most popular football club tournament in the entire world has reached its quarter-final stages and if the round of 16, the reminder of the round of 16 matches was anything to go by, we are in for a treat. So before we start talking about the fixtures, the quarterfinal matches, let's just talk about one thing which has been disturbing me and that is the VAR and most importantly the decisions that lead to penalties and I don't understand, especially the one penalty which Luis Suarez converted against Napoli, it was harsh. But let's be clear, maybe Barcelona would have made it to the quarterfinals if that decision was not given as a penalty. VAR and the referees, they have to get their act together because there have been far too many decisions which are controversial. And very honestly, they're killing the game. They have to get this sorted out ASAP. Now, any team saying that we don't mind conceding two goals but we'll score four or five goals I mean, that's attitudes. That is Atlanta and the spirit that they bring to the game. Atlanta was one of the most exciting teams in Europe this season. I'm not just talking about the European tournaments. I'm just talking about European leagues in general. Atlanta was one of the most high-flying teams in Europe. They were just brilliant. Just imagine, it has been more than 60 years that a team has scored more than 95 goals in Serie A. But unfortunately, Ilicic will not be part of the team as he's opted out, citing some personal issues. Just imagine, can we even think of another team which in their debut season made such a huge impact in the UEFA Champions League? And more so, they started off by losing their first three matches. And yet, they are here. Not bad at all. And the high-flying Atlanta is taking on another team known for their attacking prowess, which is Paris Saint-Germain. They could be a little rusty given the fact that they haven't been playing competitive football for a long time. Yes, that's true. But Lyon just proved us in their match against Juventus that that's not going to be a big deal. But the weight of expectation, the pressure that the PSG team carries is second to none. They are expected to win this and that too for a team which has not won any European title ever. And investing so much in players and the team, they're expected to be the champions of Europe. And that expectation has also played a big role that weighs down the players when they reach the knockout stages of the Champions League year in, year out. But this time round, they're luckily in the easier half of the draw. And PSG is not short on firepower or star power for that matter. Because Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi and Neymar used to be this big huge names in international football and he has some amazing talents playing alongside him and one of the major names Kylian Mbappe most of them said that the injury could be ruling him out of the Champions League but he have started to train light and could be featuring I'm not sure if he will be playing the quarter final or will he be coming on as a substitute or something but I think he, he definitely in the traveling team for the Champions League matches to Portugal. But for me, the big worry that the PSG will have is the suspension of Angel Di Maria for this particular quarterfinal match. So maybe Kylian Mbappe will not be in his full fitness and if they are missing Angel Di Maria, will they be able to stop the Atlanta Jaguars? Now on to two teams who reached the quarterfinal stage after defeating the finalists from last year. Leipzig did that after defeating Tottenham Hotspur. Atletico Madrid provided the biggest surprise of the season. The biggest upset taking down the defending champions Liverpool. But there was a difference because Tottenham Hotspur was nothing like the team that we saw last year. But Liverpool was even stronger. Now let's start with the German team Leipzig who will have their tactics in place. But they will be missing Timo Werner who was the standalone performer for them in the last couple of years of course. Timo Werner was not just their top scorer. He was the player that they depended on to win them the Champions League. He scored 28 goals and also provided 8 assists in Bundesliga alone this year. 
and I cannot by any means, any stretch of imagination, understand the decision of joining Chelsea before the season was over. So we're talking about the Champions League. You guys are in the quarterfinals. How can a team let go of their best player, the player who could be providing with all the crucial goals or maybe assisting to get them their most important player before the Champions League quarterfinals, man? Make no mistake, Timo Werner will be missed. And also there is one sliver of hope they have is Yusuf Paulson could be back from his injury. But there are also several other injury worries that could be bugging Leipzig. Atletico Madrid was a stellar side in the 2010s. They were absolutely brilliant to watch. And imagine they had success in the Champions League and also in La Liga. But yet most of them considered Barcelona and Real Madrid to be the best sides from Spain. Yes, they have won more titles, but Atletico Madrid was there or thereabouts. Now, and for that reason, Atletico Madrid worked really hard. Maybe they worked even harder than the other two big names from Spain. And that work rate was definitely on show in their round of 16 matches against the champions. Now, digest this. Liverpool had 72% of position in the leg two of the round of 16 matches. They had 34 shots, 11 of them on target with an 83% of pass accuracy. And also Atletico Madrid conceded 16 corners. Just imagine man, all the numbers were against them. But they believed in themselves and their defense was absolutely sharp. A sturdy, hard-working defense boosted by one of the best goalkeepers in the game today in Jan Oblak. There are some huge names, big clubs in Europe who's trying to steal the goalkeeper away from Atletico Madrid. But they will have to wait till Atletico Madrid finishes their European season for 2019-2020. Now to the most exciting match of the Champions League quarterfinals. It is Barcelona against Bayern Munich. Two heavy waves of European football or let's say world football taking on each other. This could be, this could have very well be the UEFA Champions League final. But unfortunately, one of these two teams will not be even seeing the semi-finals this year. Now let's talk about Barcelona. How good was Lionel Messi in that match? Messi was instrumental in defeating Napoli. Napoli was not playing bad football because when the match started, Napoli was the team that was attacking first. They even had some nice chances to actually score first and take the lead. Maybe the game would have actually taken a different route if that goal would have gone in. But unfortunately or fortunately for Barcelona, they hung on. Now let's talk about the Lionel Messi goal. I had a feeling that nobody was able to or will be able to snatch that ball from Lionel Messi's feet. Lionel Messi was triple teamed twice in a matter of like 10 seconds maybe and yet he scored. That was a brilliant goal. And talking about Luis Suarez, yes he scored a very good penalty but it's almost like he lost his bite. Literally. But Barcelona has lost their aura, they've lost their charm because they used to be this invincible team. They also had this aura of invincibility around them. I mean, if they are against a team, the team would lose half their confidence even before they set foot on the pitch. That was Barcelona. It's not that Barcelona anymore. And that could play against them because they're taking on an inform, a magnificent Bayern Munich team. And Bayern Munich is the only team not to have dropped any points in this year's Champions League. They've won all their matches, all the six matches in the group stage and won all their four knockout matches as well. They're looking like a perfect team. They're good in defense, they're extremely good in the midfield and very solid front line. Lewandowski is actually from a different planet at the moment. He is not only scoring goals, he is providing them as well. But let's talk about their attack. Let's take Lewandowski aside, let's keep him aside and talk about the other two factors which has been instrumental in the success of Bayern Munich this year. One is the rediscovery of the player Thomas Muller. Apart from the goals that Muller scored, he came out with the maximum number of assists in Bundesliga this season. And in Nabri, they have a player who scored 12 times and assisted for 10 goals in Bundesliga alone. So, 
Bayern Munich is a very strong side who will be looking to recapture their European crown, which at least the Bayern fans believe belongs to them. City will be one of the favourites, if not the favourite, to win the Champions League this season. And remember, they did not start the season well. They were pretty ordinary in the beginning of the season. But once they tightened a few screws, they were unstoppable. I mean, just imagine the way they finished the season. They were scoring at will against good sides. They were scoring 3, 4, 5 goals against very good sides. But just imagine... If Leon manages to keep Kevin De Bruyne silent, yes, City is just not about that one player, but that one player will make one hell of a difference. Just imagine how badly Real Madrid miss Sergio Ramos and his service, his leadership. So if Kevin De Bruyne can be taken out of the equation, then that is the only chance that Leon has probably come out with another big upset in this Champions League quarterfinal. Let's talk about Lyon. Lyon had an average outing in the group stage, winning two but drawing two and also lost two matches. And even in their round of 16 match against Juventus, they were not convincing. They did not like win with flying colours. But they did enough. But is doing enough and surviving to the next round good enough to win the Champions League? Well, I don't think so. But they were pretty good. They were well rested and looked sharp against Juventus. Now, here is when sports psychology and the mindset of the team comes into play. Because they have to believe that they can go out and win against Manchester City. The belief has to be without any shadows. If that is the case, Leon will be a strong side. Because they're defensively extremely good. They're very disciplined. That we saw in the game against Juventus. Juventus was not finding it any easy to break down the Lyon defense. They, their goalkeeper is also good. I mean, he will have some fine saves. But, you know, there were points in the game that, you know, we thought the goalkeeper could have done better. Especially the CR7 goal, the second one we are talking about, not the penalty. We thought the goalkeeper should have saved that. So, make no mistake, Manchester City will be coming with waves of attack. One after the another. And is the Lyon defense gonna hold still? Now, before we go, let's try and predict which way the tie is going to go. This is extremely difficult. Let's start with Atlanta and PSG. This game is not going to be a statement. Nobody would be betting against that. There will be plenty of goals and on both ends. But I think, to most people's surprise, I, I would believe Atlanta is going to win this match against PSG. PSG is a very strong side. They want this title more than anything else in the world. And I think that would weigh them down. And also the fact that they may not get the full service of Kylian Mbappe. I don't know how fit he is. And also, Angel Di Maria will be missing, will be suspended from playing this match. So, I think Atlanta will have a slight advantage and win this match. Does Atlanta have the team or the firepower to actually go all the way and win this thing? I don't think so. But against PSG, I think Atlanta would just barely make it. <laughs> Leipzig against Atletico Madrid. We saw how resilient Atletico Madrid can be. How mentally strong they are in their last match against Liverpool. And a Leipzig team without Timo Werner, I think Atletico Madrid will go through. Now the toughest one, it is Barcelona against Bayern Munich. I, this, is, this is simply a man versus a team kind of a scenario. Bayern Munich is a team. Yes, we know how good Lewandowski has been, but Bayern Munich is just not Robert Lewandowski. But at the moment, the way Barcelona is playing, a lot depends on how well Lionel Messi is going to perform. But I think Bayern Munich is looking like favourites to win this match. I would say Bayern Munich. Unless if we see Lionel Messi transform from a man to a messiah. <laughs> Manchester City versus Lyon may not be as straightforward as many make that to be. But I think still Manchester City is, has too much firepower for Lyon. I think Manchester City will go through. <laughs> so that's my reactions. Now please tell me how you think the tie is going to go. And I'll definitely be 
reading all your comments love to read your comments so do comment and do let me know who is your favorite to win this year's champions league so until we meet again this is radio baba signing off peace over and out Once I finished editing the video, the video was almost like 24 minutes and I had to edit a good 8 minutes of it. <laughs>